Today, I have the pleasure of catching up with Chris Berlay from Stakeholder Gold. How are you today? I'm well, Tracy. Thank you very much. Chris, we were talking earlier during Investor Talk about how significant your news was in October and how the audience may not just not understand it. Can you share this with the investor news audience? Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Tracy. Yeah, there's 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 a couple features of what we're looking at at the Ballarat in the middle of the White Gold District in the Yukon that are uh, that are that are quite compelling. One is the sheer size of the anomaly that we have, 3,200 meters. So it's, um, you know, we're looking at 4X, 5X on the footprint for, for the original footprint for Golden Saddle, which is about 30 kilometers to the northwest. That's about a million, million and a half ounces today. So we're looking at a footprint four times the strike length of the, uh, that that deposit had uh, at, 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 in the early stages. So number one is 3,200 meters of, of, of anomalous strike length for the gold anomaly that we have in the sky zone. The other significant feature there is orthonisic rock type and an absence of arsenic. So arsenic uh, occurs in, in, the, um, in the coffee deposit. It occurs in the arc in, in south of uh, Golden Saddle, uh, but it does not occur in Golden Saddle giving, and, and there are other attributes, grade, spare grade, and also metallurgical recovery that, that make uh, the economics for Golden Saddle quite compelling. Uh, constrained by size, arguably at 1 million ounces. This, uh, this though, having the attributes of uh, a very extensive gold anomaly over 3.2 kilometers and an absence of arsenic, arsenic uh, lends itself to the potential for a, uh, for, for a very substantial and um, um, uh, economically recoverable gold uh, discovery in the, in, the, in the white gold. So I think, I think it's, I think it's, it's, you know, those features have not uh, been clearly identified by the market, um, but we did the best we could to convey those attributes uh, in, in the press release. And for all of you out there preparing for the holidays, this may be the present you were looking for. If I recall, you have one of the tightest structures I've seen in the entire capital, capital markets. How many million shares outstanding? Yeah, 13.1 at this stage. We're going to keep it to 15 million is our objective through this discovery process. We are expanding our quarries in Brazil. Good cash flow business there, expanding it fourfold now um, in the next six months. So that 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 gives us some real comparative advantage and, and an ability to keep our share capital uh, co very tight, constrained capital structure, 15 million shares. So if we go through this process, have what we're talking about, what we think there's a possibility of uh, in terms of uh, in terms of a multi-million ounce uh, gold uh, um, target there on, on Ballarat. Uh, and and have it all with a 15 million share count, then we would look for re-rating of the share price. Yeah. And you were talking about the valuation earlier. Can you share with our audience what you were telling me? Valuation, they paid $100 per ounce for coffee, part of the coffee deposit. I mean, measured, indicated, inferred uh, ounces in, in total, but um, the part of the coffee is constrained by arsenic. Um, um, and, um, you know, Again, we're we're talking about three thousand two hundred meters of strike length. We're talking four or five x on on what has uh, turned into one to one and a half million ounces for the golden saddle, which is probably the, the most relevant comparable for what we're looking at in the sky zone. Um, that gives us a very substantial target, three hundred meters to the west off the road that Newmont's building. This is gonna you know this is gonna provide some significant logistical advantages to this uh, asset. If we're able to prove this out. We're gonna do it as soon as possible in the spring. Uh, I would expect a very meaningful re-rating of, of the valuation. But of course, you know, you don't have a lot of volume. I'd like to discuss this with everybody watching right now because you don't have a lot of shares outstanding. If someone needs to buy more shares, do they need to contact you directly, Chris? That's certainly possible at any stage, of course. Anybody that wants to wants to be involved, wants to try and, uh, you know, have interest in the company. But there will be a float, I think, I think when we start into this process next year, we'll, you know, what's the difference between $1 and $5 a share? I'd say million, two million shares you might see somewhere along the way. Um, you know, and, and part of the advantage of a, of a tight capital structure is that you can re-rate the share price with, with, with meaningful buying. That um, if, if there's reasons to re-rate the price, which come from a, a real discovery, then uh, then you can do that. The, the uh, part of the 
part of the uh, you know consequence you might say of a tight capital structure is less liquidity when there's when there's little activity. But we're generating cash flow from Brazil, so we're not not really in the process of issuing shares. We tend to go through this process with 15 million shares outstanding. That's our objective. Well, of course, you are our top mineral prices expert as well. So we are going to be checking in with you regularly in 2024. So for those of you out there going, huh, this sounds very interesting. We'd like to learn more. We'd like to encourage you to go to the Stakeholder Gold website. But what should shareholders anticipate for 2024? What are you looking at? Okay, the first four months, we're going to be talking about expanding our cash flow in Brazil. It's been a very profitable business from a single quarry. We're now going to add four new quarries. And um, we we could generate between half a million and a million dollars uh, a year from each of those quarries. So a good, uh, robust, profitable operation in Brazil. That's what we'll be doing from January to April. As soon as we can, we're going to be uh, active again on the Ballarat and the White Gold. We have the, the sky zone there. Uh, we have a, a large copper anomaly and, and further gold anomalies, but the sky zone is an immediate uh, target, 3.2 kilometer strike length, um, no arsenic in the soils, and um, you know a, a, a really a, a target of merit. So uh, April, from April on, it will be about what uh, what we're doing in the Yukon. There you go. Gold, Yukon, and Brazil, stakeholder gold. For more information, again, go to their website. And Chris, thank you so much for joining us. You're an esteemed colleague, and we appreciate this update. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tracy. Appreciate it. Thank you.